Coming up on today's episode, we look at the iconic Pi PF8 hand portable radio from the 1970s, immortalised by the insanely amazing 70s UK cop drama The Professionals. We look in detail at this hard to find classic radio, look at its unique construction and operation and try to see if we can make a completely new radio. Yes, you heard that right folks, can we build a copy of this radio from scratch? Yes, we're going to tear down and measure up using a combination of CAD modelling, 3D printing and CNC machining. We can, for the first time in over 30 years, make a very close replica to this very hard to find classic radio. All we need is an original radio to take some measurements from, a weapon and some booze. What could possibly go wrong? Well, that was a good start, wasn't it? Managed to pick one of these up thanks to Mike at the Vintage.net forums. Uh, I put out a message on the forums there and asking for a radio and he PM'd me and here it is one week later. Very lucky to have found this radio, they've been coming increasingly hard to find and the ones that are available affect uh, pretty good money these days. Um, so I was really pleased to get this one. Um, if anyone hasn't seen one of these before, it's a very novel and unique design here with a three-stepped volume on-off control switch on the top. Remember this thing was designed uh, in 1975 and I think released for sale in 1977. So it's got a lot of features which you know you see in modern day uh, electronics these days. Um, a captive aerial, uh, built-in dual microphones there, left and right, so you can left-handed or right-handed you can use this like a telephone obviously a, a lanyard clip there no external power sockets here so we've got this uh, little battery charging uh, nub on the side of it there uh, offered up in just one channel only uh, on a frequency range of 405 to 470 meg at the time and uh, offered with various tone calling options as you see the little red button on the top of the unit there um, the unit also has a has a, a nice, uh, really nicely machined aluminium uh, clip. You don't see that on any radios these days, do you? Uh, really, really nicely made. A polycarbonate shell, very, very durable and hard, hard wearing. Although this one looks like it has been dropped. It's a slight crack in the base of the unit, and unfortunately, the seller didn't have the battery clip to go into the side of it. But we're actually going to uh, manufacture a clip to go into the side of that. More of which you'll see a little bit uh, later on in the video. Um, spinning the device around you can see the overall size of it I'll throw some measurements up in a little while I thought I'd throw in a gun for good measure <laughs> as it was always shown in the uh, the show there with uh, Lewis Collins' character Bodie uh, guns and women and fast cars and booze it was a different time in the 1970s wasn't it anyway a few dimensions for you if you're of interested I, I looked around you know when I was looking at uh, making one of these on the CAD and I couldn't find any dimensions for this unit really over the, just the general size of it off of the product brochure so it was good to get my hands on one and finally get to have a little play around um, you'll see here when I pry the unit open just how nicely made this unit was for the time remember this was a very long time ago and uh, we weren't we didn't have any surface mounting components to rely on here and the low operating power of this radio on just two 1.2 volt series connected NICADs meant that the designers had to construct um, a DC to DC converter circuit which for at the time was quite a novel feature um, this unit itself, I'm not sure if it's working or not. I'm not going to try and get this unit going. Uh, this unit is, is purely just a, a, a more or less an ornament for me and just a, a, a nice uh, a reminder of days gone by, I suppose, in radio terms. So it'll be something I'm just keeping in the collection and having on, on, on display. Uh, but I really like how this is made. It looks very tidy inside. I don't believe this would have been one of the active uh, radios being used on the TV show, although who knows. This is the dual PTT button there, and you can see how that's cleverly been um, machined into the case there, and just with those little spring plates pushing down on the switches inside. So I thought that was a very novel way of, uh, of doing that with the dual PTT. Like I say, a polycarbonate shell with the microphone and speaker housing at the top through the grill, and then the two lower uh, microphones on the bottom left and right of the unit, allowing it to be used essentially like a like a telephone in that sense. And um, you can see the the uh, the top speaker array there and speaker microphone. There's the actual board mounted microphone acoustic chamber there on the on both sides. As you can see, it just cuts through the side of the board. Again, a very very novel feature and. Um, uh, by all accounts the audio from these was fairly reasonable although the actual power output wasn't ama amazing um, the, the actual um, 
case of this is about one millimeter thick you'll see a little bit later on when I uh, start modeling it it was quite uh, quite a challenge the shape is a fairly unusual shape and um, I'm not majorly skilled in 3d modeling so what well, it did represent quite a challenge to me but you'll see a little bit later how we got on with that but it, but it, this is just part one of a probably a two or a three part series we're going to be running here on this uh, uh, lovely little set. I really was so pleased to get my hands on one of these having seen them at radio rallies in the sort of late 80s and early 90s um, But never having picked one up rather stupidly um, You'll see here just second hand I kept checking on prices and availability and you really won't get anything for under a hundred pounds If you're looking at buying one of these they're becoming much harder to get to get hold of So the plan is to design one in 3D, um, get all the materials together and actually manufacture uh, a clone, another one, um, and put the innards from a, a modern radio inside it, um, probably a, a PMR uh, innards just for fun, so it can actually make a functioning radio but absolutely style it on the PF8. So this was my own personal challenge, I thought it would be an interesting project to try and make anyway. I've ordered one of these end of 3 uh, 3D printers which you see here and I thought I would get myself up to speed with the software so I've, I've downloaded the Design Spark 3D software which you can get from RS here in the UK for free and it's a very powerful parametric um, 3D modeling tool um, and I, like I said I've not, not done any 3D modeling at all before and um, as you can see here the way I briefly started was to import the image uh, of the radio in and um, once you got the image in you can quickly start sketching around the image and um, then transferring the 2D lines you see on the flat image into three dimensional projections. Um, it's a very, very nice bit of software this. There are other options out there uh, which you can use such as Blender and there are, um, there's, a, a micro, there's Fusion which is an Autodesk product. There's various ones that you can choose. Um, just choose one that's right for you. This was perfect for me because it was free, there's no licensing issues and it's very very easy to use um, and you'll see from what I've done here. So I mean you can quickly very see how quickly you can get going with this. You just pop your basic shape in and, uh, and once you get it in you can start to manipulate it in three dimensions and you can pull faces out, round corners, put through holes in. I mean the, you can do lots of very mechanical stuff with this making gears and all sorts of things. So. I mean, it's a bit of a learning curve to it, obviously, but um, I, I really recommend this if you do want to have a go at making uh, one of these or just doing any uh, uh, 3D work prior to getting your 3D printer. I think it's definitely better to learn how to make stuff before you get a 3D printer than it is to get a 3D printer and then worry about trying to make stuff. So I spent um, a week or so with this software playing around and trying and measuring up the bits and trying to uh, to make one of these radios in three dimensions first off and you can send the output of this directly to a, a cutter program and put it into your 3d printer so i pick up picked up some measurements from the unit with my old calipers there and uh, scribbled a few bits of paper down information down on the paper and then started off modeling the knob here as you can see with the splines on the side of it and then we moved on to the case unit there um, there's still a few little after touches I need to finish off such as the ribs around the holes on the top of the case uh, which are proven to be a bit of a pain to do. Uh, I, I modelled the battery clip and uh, there are functions in the software for hollowing out the, the shape there so I didn't have to do too much for that. You can just click on a face and it will actually hollow out the insides of the solid that you're doing. So I'm just clicking on the side here just to enable the shapes that I've already done. Now you can draw the shapes individually and, and copy them in onto your main drawing as I've done here and then align them all together and all I'm simply doing here is hiding them and then switching them back on to show you in sequence how, how they go together. So I modelled all of the the items you see on the radio actually individually and then brought them into the model together there and it, it, it might seem a bit daunting at first on how to do this but there are lots of YouTube tutorials if you're interested in doing this uh, to go and have a look at there's a guy I think his name is Jim Taylor uh, a retired gentleman in the UK that's done some fantastic uh, work on this program so uh, I'll pop the link to his channel in the description if you want to go and look at some of his videos. Um, so this, I think you'll agree, it looks pretty darn good. Remember, I, I've got no experience in doing 3, 3D work at all. And uh, I managed to produce this in about three sort of solid evenings of uh, playing around in between doing everything else. And just to show you how this looks uh, up against the real radio, we'll cut to this scene here. 
and uh, you can see there it's not far off I've got a few little tweaks to do around the belt clip and around the top of the metal plate there where it meets the dial but I'm pretty pleased with that I'll be honest so on the next episode we are hopefully we'll have the 3d printer if it arrives by then and we're also going to look at perhaps CNC machining the, the clip and a few other bits that's the antenna I believe on the top of the unit there so don't forget join me in the next one you can catch up on it might not be next week it might be a few weeks yet but please join me in the next episode and we'll have a bit more uh, progress on this cheers for watching